Okay, uh, welcome back. So we had to discuss today the demand and supply. And this lecture will discuss the demand. Wait a minute. Okay, so we uh, we had to discuss uh, the demand and supply. Uh, let me give you some background. You know that the success or the failure in a business it depend on how accurately you gauge effective or actual demand for your product or services. So a well researched production of future consumer demand should inform every aspect of your your operation. Uh, from the amount of supply you supplies you purchase uh, to the number of employees you hire. So definitely this is the core concept of the, the economics for your business, you know. So let me uh, explain the first term that uh, what is demand. And this lecture will discuss all about demand. And in the next lecture we will discuss the supply. So what's the definition? What, what we call demand? Demand refers to both willingness and ability of a customer to pay a given price to buy a product and our services. So it means that it is actually both the willingness, okay, and the second thing is ability. Mean you are willing to buy something but you don't have the ability to purchase that particular product, then it doesn't create demand, okay? So demand is actually a market, you, you know that marketed uh, markets are made up sellers and buyers. Seller have a supply of goods and buyers have a supply of money. So uh, the buyers pay the money, supplier uh, give the goods or services. And so if the price, uh, if the price is, is, is right, mean the price is reasonable, then a seller and a buyer agree and uh, agree to make a trade. And the amount of buyers and trusts uh, that exist at a specific price level is, is called uh, demand. So demand is actually the willingness and the ability of the customer to pay a given price to purchase a good service. Okay? And this is sometimes referred as effective demand that we call effective demand okay that distinguish a genuine demand from want and desire to buy something you know want and desire is the thing you are willing to buy or purchase something but you don't have the ability let's say a person says that okay i need a bmw car but he don't have money to purchase their thing so this will not create demand for the company why because the company uh, will only, uh, you know, the, the only supply the product if they, uh, they, they think that, okay, the consumer or the customer are willing plus they have the ability for the particular product. If someone say, okay, I need, a, a, you know, airplane, but if he don't have money, then how he can purchase that airplane? So the, the supply will not make a lot of airplane because the person are just willing or they have a desire. Uh, for the particular product. So effective demands uh, are the demand where the willingness and the ability both exist, right? Uh, now we have in general term uh, 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 that, uh, you know, uh, the, there's a law and that law is called, uh, um, uh, what we call it, it's uh, law of demand. Uh, in general, quantity demanded, quantity demanded fall is price rise, means that when the price goes off, price goes up then the demand will be down and this is the general or you can general law and we call this inverse relations in the price increase the demand decrease and this law is uh, okay so uh, what we have discussed okay now this uh, the, in the general rules uh, we can say that uh, uh, when the quantity demanded the quantity demanded uh, falls as the price rise means when the price goes off the demand will down this is inverse relationship and that in some this, this this rule is known as law of demand okay you know 
as low prices demand as high because many buyers want to get in on the bargain and at high prices demand is low because buyer would rather save their money or spend it on something else okay what is the reason behind this two relationship uh, okay this there are two reasons for this relation the first one as the prices of the goods or services fall the cons the customers real income rises what does it mean it means that with the same amount of income the customer can buy more product uh, at low price let's say this is a product a okay the price is a uh, let's say five dollars and when the price go and the, the this is the product a price which is goes down and it become 2.5 dollar so when the buyer before the buyer of purchasing only one product with five dollars now the buyer will purchase two product with 2.5 so with the same amount the amount is same because this is he has a five dollar but with five dollars before he was purchasing only the one product but after some time when the price decreases and the price become 2.5 dollars then the the customer was able to purchase two product of a okay this is the first relationship so the real income it rises because the amount of and what, what does it mean by the real income means that the amount of income uh, with the same uh, same amount of income the customer will be able to purchase more goods at a lower price the second thing is it is the prices of the good or services fall the more customer able to pay so they are more likely to buy more product so you, you know this the concept behind this statement is you see let's say we have three people a b and c and all these three people have five dollars and one person is ten dollars okay now here we have a market and the market we have let's say this is a mobile we using cell phone and the purchase purchasing power for um, purchasing this product mobile is ten dollars now if you see this is a community okay if all of these want to purchase this product then only one person of them can purchase this thing because the price is uh, ten dollar and only d has a uh, ten dollar that he can purchase now if the price goes down let's say the price goes down to five dollar five dollars so all of them have five dollars so what what does it mean it means that all all have the, uh, the ability and all have uh, you know if, if they want to purchase this product then they can purchase so is it mean that as the price of the good services falls the more customer the more customer we mean this these these people because before they don't have money they were not able to purchase the thing and now they are able so this will also become a uh, they will en enter the, the purchasing circle and they will purchase the thing so this is the the two relation behind this relationship law of demand okay so what we have discussed what what we have discussed about the effect to demand that uh, effect to demand is the term uh, economists use to refer to the actual demand that exists in a market okay mean the willingness and the ability of the customer to pay a given price uh, to buy a good or service right now in other words, you can say like the effective demand exists when a buyer has both the desire, mean willingness, and the ability to buy a product, right? Now let's move on. We have, uh, this is the demand curve, okay? This is the demand curve, and the demand curve, demand curve show the downward sloping. You see, this is the downward sloping, down, oh, sorry, downward sloping. Okay, now we have price one and price two, and this is the quantity one and quantity two. Here we have write price, and here we have written the quantity quantity demanded. Okay, now as the price is falls, mean the price is fall from P one. This is the price. Let's say this is ten dollar, and it become five dollars. Okay, and the quantity demanded at ten dollar was uh, let's say twenty kg. Let's say. And when it's go uh, the price down then it becomes 40 kg okay so what does it mean when the price goes down when the price goes down then the demand goes up before with ten dollar we were purchasing the 20 kg when the price goes down to five dollar 
then we have increased the demand to 5k so this is the and this is the downward slope in the relation between the price and the quantity demand okay let's move on this is the, another concept the another concept is uh when the what is market demand what is market demand so market demand is actually uh, the sum actually the sum of all individual demand for a product the sum of all the individual demand for a product if you see okay so it's uh, actually the sum of all the individual demand of for a product this individual let's say we have here this is the male customer and this is the female customer if we take the sum of all these then we have a total customer demand and that is called market demand okay this is the market demand so adding off all the individual demands at each price level uh, then this this is the example here you see if we have uh, 500 uh, uh, dollar by me, uh, 500 uh, quantity demanded by the um, uh, a male customer for the, the the same price this is ten dollars and four hundred customer demanded for the same product and the total demand become nine uh, uh sorry nine hundred so this is the uh, market demand clear now let's move on we have some determinant and in the first determinant uh, we know that there is a price uh, that when the price is uh, the factor which is are affecting your demand and so <clears throat> determinants are the factor that that affect the demand okay so the first one factor is uh, the price you know the price when the price goes up the demand will be down and other thing remain constant and when the price uh, goes uh, up then the demand will be low so this is the first determinant <clears throat> now we have some other determinant that are <clears throat> not uh, you know not fries uh, uh, that non fries uh, determinant and that include we have uh, the first one is income okay when <coughs> what it mean well, it means that the higher level of income means that the customer are able to willing to buy more goods and services so it means then when when the income increases when the income increases when income of the customer increases increases then definitely demand will also increase it means that there's a direct relation between income and uh, demand okay uh, the another is substitute and complements goods substitute good we know that uh, the goods which uh, can be used instead of each other like uh, pepsi coca cola uh, these products can be used as alternative if you don't have cokes then definitely you go for the pepsi if you don't have tea then you go for copy so this is the substitute goods <clears throat> okay what's the relation between uh, uh, substitute goods uh, for the demand let's say we have another uh, the another uh, concept is complements group the products are giantly demanded such as tennis balls and tennis uh, rackets are cinema movies are for popcorn if the price of the product increases okay now you see if the price if the price of one product fall then definitely the demand for the substitute will also fall let's say you have two let's say the coke this is the uh, coca-cola and this one we have pepsi clear now if the price of coke is increasing then definitely the demand for the Pepsi will be increasing why because the people will uh, uh, you know uh, decrease the demand of the coke and will go for the Pepsi right so when the subs when when there is a sub substitute available then definitely the price of one product goes up the demand for the substitute will be increasing and the, what about the complement good the complement good are those good which can be used uh, uh, both without generally you can use them so uh, let's say we have to uh, what is the example here uh, mm -hmm. okay cinema uh, here is example is cinema movie tickets and for cons if someone is going for watching the cinema and then definitely they will uh, use the popcorn 
if the demand for cinema moves da goes down, then definitely for convert down. So there's a direct relation between the complement good if the if the demand of one uh, product uh, product let's say this is a product A and this is the product B. Both of them are complement goods. Both are using uh, jointly. So if the uh, price of the product A increasing, increasing, <coughs> the definitely demand will be decreasing. And when the demand for this product decreasing, the definitely demand for the the complement good of the complement good of the A will also be decreasing. Clear? This is the second uh, uh, thing, uh, the second determinant we have discussed. The first one is we have discussed about the uh, income. The second one we have discussed substitute. The third one we have discussed the complement. Let's talk about uh, uh, advertising. So when we do more ad advertising, the definitely the product will be more in demand. And if you spend less on the advertising, then the demand will be lower, definitely. Uh, what about the government policies? Okay, if the government uh, increase taxes, okay, then the demand will be decreasing. Okay, if the product is uh, more taxable and more taxes are applied on the product, then definite demand, the price will goes up and the demand will be down. So when the government impose more taxes, impose more taxes, then the demand of the product will be decreases. And if the government gives subsidies and subsidy, so the cost of production will be decreasing and the cost of production will decrease and the price will be charged low. So when the government uh, give more subsidies, then, then the demand will be more. Okay, the price will be low, so the demand will be high. Uh, these are the determinant. Okay, many more other, uh, you know, other uh, determinant also present like availability of the credit facilities. Uh, you can also economy also, you know, government policies. These, these all are the determinant uh, that affect the demand. Okay. Now we have some, you know, uh, 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 moment uh, and shift in the demand. So when there is a change in the prices, if you change the prices, so due to change in prices, uh, price of goods services cause moment along the demand curve. If you see here, uh, if you increase price, uh, this is the price P3. If you increase the price, then you will have a contraction, mean the demand will be decreasing. And if you decrease the price, then there will be expansion, the demand will be increasing. So it means the because of the price increase and decrease, the, the, um, there will be a, the, uh, uh, the demand curve, uh, the, there will be the moment in the demand curve, along the curve, mean the demand <coughs> first will be here, and then will go there and there. So there will be contraction expansion. But what about the other factor, other determinant? The other determinant, uh, if you if you uh, talking about the non-price determinant, then that will create a shift in the demand. Okay, if the person, if a person, uh, let's say a change in the non-price factor of the effective demand, the shift and the demand curve. If you see here, this is the price one. This will be constant. Okay, we are not decreasing or increasing. Increase. This will be constant. Okay, the first, the person was demanding, uh, let's say quantity one, and his income increasing. So with the with income increasing, then definitely they will spend more and they'll purchase more products so the demand will shift from here to here. And if the, 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 the income of the uh, customer uh, decreasing, then the shift, uh, the, the demand will uh, reduce to this one and the, the car will be shipped from uh, Q1 to Q2. So this is the ship. So uh, what is the nutshell? I will explain in the next, you see here. We have discussed about demand, that what is demand. We have also discussed uh, the relationship that is a demand law. We have also discussed that price when goes up, then demand will goes down. We have also discussed the reason of the relationship. Then we have discussed some uh, determinant of factor. You can call it factor or determinant. And that we have discussed income. We have also discussed the substitute effect. We have discussed the complement effect. We have, okay. We have also discussed the, another thing uh, that is where complement. Uh, we have also discussed uh, um, the availability of uh, 
uh, credit facility if the customer are more uh, able uh, to access to the credit so definitely they will get they will spend more money uh, other thing advertising we have discussed already now we have also discussed the curve so when there is a price change then the moment and the curve will be along along the curve and if there is a non price factor effect in the demand then that will be shipped in the curve so this is the concept of the demand law okay for today this enough we will discuss supply in the next lecture thank you for watching